In this video, we're gonna cover everything you need to know about VORs and VOR visualization in one clear and concise lesson. Let's check it out. I'm Jason Miller, a full-time professional flight instructor. On the Finer Points channel, you can join me as I bring you tips and tricks that I've learned from 20 years on the flight line. All right, aviators, welcome back. So I am aware that almost everybody today is flying with a moving map, whether it's on an iPad or on an iPhone or mounted on your panel. However, it doesn't mean that you're always gonna have access to that moving map. Uh, and it certainly doesn't mean that you can skip understanding where you are in relation to the course deviation indicator or the needles that you're seeing on your primary navigation display, okay? And at the very minimum, you're gonna have to understand this stuff on a written test. So in this video, we're gonna go from A to Z pretty quick, but we're gonna cover almost everything you need to know about flying with a VOR or with an HSI. Now, most of you have seen an HSI because you're flying on glass. You've seen that needle superimposed on your heading indicator. But what you need to understand is in the old school world, or for those of you that are flying analog panels with traditional course deviation indicators, those two things are broken apart and it's up to the pilot to visualize where you are on the face of the OBS. Or, if you don't have an HSI, superimpose in your mind the navigation needle over your heading indicator, uh, which is very difficult to do. So let's just start with a review of some of the basics on understanding uh, how to visualize yourself in relation to a VOR if you don't have a moving map. A VOR essentially has two capabilities. It can tell you where you are, around a circle. It can also tell you which side of the station you're on. All right, and it does this through the use of two radio signals that are emanating outward from the VOR. One is called the reference signal, which is just fixed and constant. The other is inside the VOR spinning at a very high RPM, and that's called the phase signal. And at different points around the VOR station, those two signals are out of phase to different degrees, all right? And the equipment inside of your airplane can tell, based on that phase difference, where you are around the circle. Pretty cool, right? So remember, those things are called radials. They move outward from the VOR. They go from zero all the way around back to 360 degrees. You can fly a 220 degree radial from the VOR. You can fly a 030 degree radial from the VOR, but radials always emanate from the VOR, which brings in the second capability of the equipment in your airplane, and that is to tell which side of the station you're on. Because if the rivers are always flowing outward, but you wanna go inward, you're kind of swimming upstream. So in that case, you can flip your omni bearing selector to a two indication and you can fly essentially inbound on the radio. Okay, let's just, just look at some examples. Now, when it comes to the written test, they are going to ask you how to interpret what you're seeing here on your omni bearing selector and to connect it to a position of an aircraft. An important thing you should know about VORs is it makes no difference which way your aircraft is headed. I can spin in a circle just like that, and I'm still standing in the same spot, even though I spun in a circle. It doesn't matter if I'm headed this way, it doesn't matter if I'm headed this way, I'm at a fixed point in space, okay? So don't let the heading of the aircraft throw you off. But let's look at this figure that you'll see on the written test. Look at image number two. You can see that we have a needle centered. The top of the OBS says 210, and we see a from indication, okay? So that we know we are on the 210 degree radial from this VOR. So if you were to put the VOR in the center of a page and you know, kind of make like a big uh, X where you've got four quadrants, this aircraft is in the lower left quadrant right on the 210 degree radial and it doesn't matter which way it's headed. Even if it were pointed back up to the northeast, it would still be on that 210 degree radial. In fact, if you did want to point to the northeast, you would need a different indication. You would need something that said 0302 and that is that second capability of your VOR, that if you do want to swim upstream, you can flip it around such that you're flying to the next outbound radial on the other side of the VOR, if that makes sense. Okay, so look at image two, for example, here, and image eight, our aircraft in the same location. All of this stuff is covered in our Ground School app. If you haven't seen that, please get a free three-day trial of the Ground School app at getgroundschool.com. All right, now, if you take that concept up just a notch and start working with an HSI, 
right? Something where you are taking that navigation needle and superimposing it over your heading indicator, then uh, on written test questions for the instrument, for example, you're going to have to deal with heading as a thing. Take a look at a figure like this, for example, you've got uh, aircraft 16 here directly south of the station, and you can see that it corresponds to image F, because not only because the, the course deviation indicator is showing the aircraft on the correct radial, but it's also showing the aircraft pointed to the northeast, which is an important part of selecting these aircraft now for the instrument rating. All right, let's look at another one. Let's look at uh, aircraft six here. So you can tell that aircraft six is northeast of the station. It looks like image E is the one that corresponds to it because the aircraft is in fact pointed north. It is in fact east of the desired course and the VOR is in fact behind the airplane as indicated indicated by the white triangle. All right, so that's how this works. Let's just take a look at one more because these can be a little confusing. Let's go the other direction. So what would we say about image A? Right, we've got an aircraft that's pointed to the southwest, but is still north or northwest of the desired course and is definitely west of the VOR station. That looks to me like it's going to be aircraft in position one. All right, this is in position one up here. We've got an aircraft that is pointed southwest is actually located northwest of the course, is west of the station, uh, and looks to be in the right place and pointing in the right direction to match with image A. All right, so that's how this works. And ultimately, operationally speaking, what's, what's the most important thing that you take away here is that when you look at the face of your OBS, assuming you've got it twisted properly, your heading is always taking you to wherever that number is on the outside of the case. So if you are trying to navigate to a needle, to a course deviation indicator to get onto a specific course, you should always note the heading you're flying and see how that heading is related to, positionally related to the needle you're trying to intercept. All right, aviators, that's all for this episode of The Finer Points. A huge thanks to the sponsors. Remember that when you renew your AOPA membership, you should select Pilot Protection Services. You can get a free three-day trial of our Ground School app at getgroundschool.com or learnthefinerpoints.com slash groundschool. Both of those will work. Also, remember to become a patron to do weekly hangouts with me, get bonus content, and much, much more. But most importantly, until I see you again, be safe and fly your best.